war. War never changes. Whether it be over assassinations, invasions, a stray dog, or just multiple countries that are mad at each other. War has affected humanity for all millennia. And because of this, ever since the boom of video games in the 1980s, many different studios and franchises have tried their hand to realistically recreate warfare to the best of their ability. Such as Battlefield, Call of Duty, or maybe even Roblox? Roblox is a massive platform where you can find just about any game genre. Platformers are obvious in this case. Horror. No. Uh. FPS, sports, tycoon, and simulators, just to name a few. Another genre of games you can find on Roblox is military. Of course, with any genre on Roblox, you can find thousands of military games, with one of those being Iron Assault. <laughs> My first objective is to invade Denmark. All of us should just gang up on the Soviets. Yes. Declare war. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Bay of Pigs uh, Invasion, 1939 ooh, edition. Really. Should we just rush Britain right now? I should I try to make out with the... <laughs> Dang it. Britain is good. They Thomas. are. What? Are you kidding me? Oh, sorry, sorry. Danny, you you declared war on Colin. Oh my God. <laughs> Created by Minitoon, the guy behind everyone's favorite Roblox horror game, Iron Assault is a real-time strategy game based off of the well-received franchise by Paradox Interactive of the same genre, Hearts of Iron. The description reads, Presenting a real-time strategy game where you can control a country and make custom scenarios. Ever wanted to run a country? Ever wanted to make alternate history come to life? No! Pick any country in one of the select maps and run it the way you want it to. Taxes too high? No problem, just lower them. Constant riots and instability? No worries, just win the support of the people. In Iron Assault, the fate of the world is in your hands. This game is relatively popular, having gained over 53 million visits with almost 120,000 favorites, and has an active player base of a few hundred. Me and some of my friends have played this game to death, and to be honest, I never even knew this game existed until February of this year, when a friend of mine in a Discord server I'm in talked about a war between Germany and Mexico, and joining against Germany. Yes, indeed very random. And after that, I was hooked on playing this game. So, how did this game work? Quick note before we start, this video is inspired by Sour Nail's Polish Review Series, so be sure to check out his channel after this video, as his Polish Review Series alongside his other videos make for some great content. Alright, now, let's get on to the video. When entering into the game, it will bring you four options, with three being available. The top is still a work in progress, since this game has been updated in two years. The options will either bring you to a list of rooms available to join, will show you the skins you've unlocked by playing through the game, or will display options for maps of different regions that you can edit. More on that later. Also, just like the Hearts of Iron series, the game starts in 1936, but unlike this series, the game ends in 1946 by default, but can be changed to be anything. Continuing in the play menu, you can join an open room or you can host your own. If you were to host your own room, you can change the name of the room, input a password, change the end date, as previously mentioned, among other things. Once you have either joined a room or opened one, the game will begin shortly after enough people have joined. Once it loads, a huge word map is presented with all countries throughout the world that existed in 1936, such as Czechoslovakia, the Soviet Union, among many others. Of course, the amount of countries that are displayed depends on the map selected. By clicking on a country, you can play as them, and the game begins. Now, through most of my playthroughs, I play as Germany because, eh, I don't know why not. So, to start off, this game, unlike its sequel in the Hearts of Iron series, has a phase system with three phases every year. The first phase is for purchasing troops, upgrading cities, etc. Purchase units. Let's establish an industrial army. The second phase is for moving troops anywhere within your country's borders. Here I come, through the border, into Afghanistan. You can also ask other countries to move through them, but most of the time they will say no. Uh, before I do that, Saudi Arabia, can I go through? No? Yeah, that makes sense. I am going to invade you after all. The third phase is likely the most important phase out of all of them, the attack phase. 
If you have declared war on a country, you can attack them and take territory and vice versa. However, if you haven't, then it's just a waste of time for you. So once the attack phase is over, it cycles back to the move phase and a new year begins. Uh, hey guys, this is me while editing. Turns out, um, I fucked up here. It actually cycles back to purchase phase after a year begins. So, uh, sorry for the misinformation there. Alright, back to the video. Rinse and repeat until the game has reached its end year. Besides phases, there are other mechanics, like resources, which is basically the currency of the game. Political power, which is used for making decisions within your country and with other countries. My first objective is to invade Denmark. And productivity, which is basically the backbone of your country. If your productivity were to be low, you would have constant coups and civil wars going on, true story. But if it were to be high, you wouldn't have to worry about any of those things. You also have research points, which can go into things like improving your infantry, unlocking major cities, and even acquiring news. You can acquire research points by conquering countries and the amount of points you get varies on that territory's research level, which can range from one to three. You can also acquire points by sending resources to other nations, even those who are allied with you. This game also has four ideologies, each representing ideologies from real life, such as democracy, communism, authoritarianism, and non-alignment, which is basically other ideologies mixed into one, such as monarchies or provisional governments. Each ideology has their advantages and weaknesses, such as if you were to be playing a communist country, you would gain two resources per year and not the other, but if you were to be playing an authoritarian country, you would gain two political power per year and not the other. However, both democracy and non-alignments are equal in resources and political power, gaining one per year. Hey guys, it's me once again while editing, and I fucked up again. Turns out, this is actually a bonus for both resources and political power. You won't actually gain this little amount of both. So yeah, uh, once again, editing me has came to fix this, and back to the video. You actually can change your ideology midway through the game, either through A, using enough political power, B, if someone else promoted the ideology enough to your country, and opposition with that ideology would spawn, and a civil war would start, or C, if you lost a war to a country you were fighting against, and got liberated, your country would automatically be changed to that ideology. Now, if you're playing as a weak nation with little to no development, and you want to fight a big and strong country, you can't, obviously, due to how your country is, but you can get some help with alliances. However, unfortunately, due to a little something called RNG, most of the time, the country that you're asking an alliance for will say NO! But sometimes, you just need a little luck. Oh! That, I said that as a joke, but, oh, now the British are an interference. And usually when I play these guys, they're bitches. But, how they formed an alliance with me when I die guys. And now Finland wants an alliance. Suddenly, I'm the good guy in this situation. And I'm allied with that country I can't pronounce, the UK and Finland. There are more things to mention about Iron Assault's gameplay, but I don't want to make this video too long, so let's move to other aspects of the game. While playing Iron Assault, you can gain credits by conquering the world, and with these credits, you can buy new skins, which obviously are cosmetic. Below the play option, there is a menu for skins, which includes skins during the World War I era, with a regular soldier, a French soldier, a German soldier, and a Russian soldier as options, with a Union worker option as well. Each skin also contains a different appearance for when you have tanks, with the Russian World War I skin being a horse to act as cavalry. Now, if you've been playing Iron Soul for a while, and the 1936 maps aren't your cup of tea, then you can always make your own. Below the skins option, there is a button for the map editor, which will display four options for 1936 maps, being Europe, Asia, Spain, and the world, as well as four slots for custom maps, which, when unedited, are just the world 1936 maps copy and pasted. In the map editor, you can mess around with stuff such as the flags of countries, their territories, research levels, and starting amount of troops, etc. Now, with this amount of customization, people have come together to make different types of maps. What the hell is even that? But the most common type seen are modern maps. No matter what server you're going to and click on play, there will always be at least one room with the modern map, guaranteed. So, now that we've covered pretty much everything on this game, should I recommend this to you? Absolutely. 
While it does have its flaws and occasional bugs, it is still a good game to jump into, get the kings worked out, and eventually conquer the world. Now of course, with any other game of its genre, it does have some strategy, although it is easy to learn over time. You can pretty much pick any country and expect to build a decent sized empire. Unless you're the Soviet Union and you want to conquer all of Eurasia. If you haven't played this game before, you should definitely check it out and see if this game fits your playstyle. If you've already played it, that's great! There is a sequel to this game, but I'll cover that in another video. But I think that'll be enough for now. Thank you guys for watching to the very end, and I'll see you later. Goodbye.